What is up everyone, Justin Parnell here, and today we're going to be upgrading the Wilds of Eldraine Commander Precon Fey Dominion into a smooth synergy machine that you can take to your next Commander Knight. And if you want to get your hands on this deck or other Wild of Eldraine products, check out the link below in the description or head to your friendly local game store. Let's pop this baby open. And the first thing that I really like to do in every Commander Precon is really dig in to the actual Commander that's helming the deck. And in this case, Fey Dominion has the face of Tegwil, Duke of Splendor, on the front of the box. So what does Tegwil have going for him? First are just his creature stats. A 2-3 with flying and death touch for one blue and a black. And the rest of the text box really indicates what Tegwil wants you to do with this deck, and that's play fairies. Lots of them. Tegwil is going to give all of your other fairies plus one plus one, and whenever they die, you get to draw a card. Boom. Simple. We're making a fairy deck, right? Not exactly. See, there's another brand new commander lurking within, and that's Alayla Cunning Conqueror. I think you know where this is going. Alayla's going to live up to her name and conquer the helm of this deck, demoting Tegwil down into the 99. So what makes a Layla Cunning Conqueror the fay for the job? Well, simply put, there's more meat on the bone for us to deck build with. A Layla Cunning Conqueror is a 2-4 flyer for 2 blue and a black. But it has two very interesting abilities that are going to drive the direction of this deck. The first is that whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you get a 1-1 Fairy Rogue token with flying. Token making is a very powerful ability, and playing spells on our opponent's turns is going to be the primary theme of our new deck. The second is whenever one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, goad target creature that player controls. This is a nice bonus to keep the nastiest monsters away from your life total. So our goal for this deck is is to play as many cards as we can on our opponent's turn so Alayla and other cards can take advantage of that fact. And our secondary theme is what Teg will want us to do in the first place, which is play a little bit of Fairy Beatdown. But note, that's our secondary theme, so the creature makeup of this deck is going to look pretty different once we're done making changes. The new creatures are going to take advantage of our primary theme of playing cards on our opponent's turn. Alayla and Tegwil aren't the only brand new magic cards in Fey Dominion, though. There are eight others, including Archmage of Echoes, Blightwing Bandit, Fairy Bladecrafter, Malleable Imposter, Misleading Signpost, Nettling Nuisance, Shadow Puppeteers, and Tegwil's Scouring. The great news is that some of those cards and the rest of the deck really do support our Flash theme, but we still have a lot of work ahead of us. And that is upgrading the rest of the deck. We're going to be looking at upgrading a max of 40% of the deck, or around 24 non-land cards total. And I've talked about before about why we're not focusing on upgrading the lands for any of these decks, but as a reminder, I think that you're just going to flat out get more use out of other cards than ones that just produce the right colors of mana, no matter how much better those lands are. So if you have those cards, great, add them to the deck. If not, feel free to add them as you go along when you add those cards to your collection later. Now it's time for the fun, finding the upgrades. I'm going to break down all of the cards into different categories, so if you want to look for replacements, you know what type of card to look for. The first group of cards are the ones that really encourage us to play stuff on our opponent's turns, and this entire group is pretty critical to the new makeup of the deck. Cunning Nightbonder will make sure our flash spells, mainly creatures, are cheaper and uncounterable. Both Dream Spoiler Witches and Dream Spoilers, unsurprisingly, are almost identical, which help us pick off the smaller creatures from our opponents, while Layla goads the larger ones. Glen Alondra Pranksters allow us to return our own flash creatures to our hand, getting multiple time uses out of them. Very critical for a few cards in this deck. Slitherwisp and Wave Break Hippocamp draw us cards for playing things on our opponent's turns. 
And finally, Fairy Tauntings slowly, or potentially quickly, will tick down our opponent's life total just for casting a spell on their turn. Note that it hits each opponent. And the next group of cards are ones with actual flash and several that play into our fairy sub theme. Abolith Spawn is a card I don't see very much in Commander, but it's at its best here when we can really take advantage of the flash and copy our opponents into the battlefield triggers. This card is definitely a hidden gem and can turn a game entirely on its head. Fairy Mastermind can give us an extra card every time someone draws their second card in a turn. Mistbind Click is a powerhouse from Standard 15 years ago, coming down during an upkeep and essentially denying someone a turn. It's not going to win you friends, but it can win you games. Vendillion Click is another bygone favorite, which provides instant speed disruption or cycles a card out of your own hand in a pinch. Vincer Shaper Savant is one of my personal favorite magic cards and still holds up as a very disruptive creature. Asinine Antics, notably, is a sorcery that can gain flash, so it still plays well with all the flash mattering cards. This is new from Wilds of Eldraine and can be devastating in combination with the Dream Spoiler duo. And the crown jewel of the entire deck, Spellstutter Sprite, is a flash creature, counterspell, and fairy all rolled into one. Do your best to protect it so you can play it again and again and again. Uh, the next group is pretty simple. We just need more interaction than the initial deck was packing. Counterspell speaks for itself, a must-have for almost every blue commander deck. Counter Squall is an upgraded negate when your mana supports it, and ours does. Familiar's Ruse has the ability to bounce our own creatures back to our hand, which is a boon to this deck. Infernal Grasp is one of the most efficient two-mana kill spells in Magic. And new from Wilds of Eldraine is Fairy Fencing, which can grow to meet your needs or just give something minus three minus three for one black mana. Great for indestructible annoyances and teams up again with the Dream Spoiler duo. And the last group is the best of the rest with some of the spiciest cards of anything that we're adding to this deck. Riptide Laboratory is the only special land we're adding to this deck, and it's a great one. These four creatures we're adding are wizards with Enter the Battlefield abilities, and all of them are excellent. Favorable Winds is a two-mana anthem effect for most of our creatures. While Gravitational Shift costs five, it has the added benefit of massively cutting off the legs of our non-flying creatures and our opponents as well. This will be a high-priority target for our opponents to destroy. Dire Undercurrents is a favorite of mine from yesteryear with a dual draw ability for us and discard for our opponents that we're going to take advantage of every time a creature hits the battlefield. Likeness Looter is a new fairy from Wilds of Eldraine that has a Merfolk Looter effect, hence the name, and can copy creatures in your graveyard. This can happen as soon as you play it, so always be on your toes to turn it into something important like a Scion of Una. And last, but definitely not least, we have the Diamond in the Rough, Veil Stone Amulet. This card is an absolute rock star in this deck. Every time we cast a spell, our creatures essentially gain Hexproof that turn. This is massive to build and protect to keep our engine. You have to protect this at all costs, and it'll protect your creatures for the rest of the game. So that's 24 new non-land cards plus one really critical land. But there's five more cards that I kind of want to shout out if you already have these in your collection that would be great adds to the deck. Bitter Blossom is one of my favorite cards in all of Magic and is a great fit here to really bolster our secondary theme of aggressive fairies. Dictate of Erebos is superior to Grave Pact in this deck as it gives us another flash sledgehammer and will often bring along a blocker with it to really wreak havoc on someone's best laid plans. Fierce Guardianship and Deadly Relic are instant speed free spells that trigger a Layla and are wildly powerful like most free spells in Magic are. And finally, brand new Talion the Kindly Lord is a fairy that will very, very, very quickly draw you handfuls of cards and drain your opponents out. All right, so we added 25 cards. Uh, now, we got to cut some cards. Group one is a bunch of fairies that are honestly kind of underwhelming, including some of the new cards that came with this deck. 
Fairy Seer, Night Veil vale Sprite, Hypnotic Sprite, and Cloud of Fairies are too low impact. Mocking Sprite, Fairy Blade Crafter, and Nettling Nuisance are all brand new cards, and as much as I like these effects, they don't benefit us enough to stick around. Now, I will say, specifically Nettling Nuisance is a, a very difficult card for me to cut, because I think the effect is powerful and forces your opponents to pressure each other with the 4-2 uh, no-blocking red pirates that, of course, fairies love to make. It might be a good candidate to return to the deck if one of the new adds isn't pulling its weight. And the next group is some effects that we might want, but they're generally not powerful enough to be exactly what we're looking for. Opt, Consider, and Frantic Search are great, instant, cheap cantrips, but we're not exactly a deck that needs velocity, so we can do better if we're looking for card selection. Reconnaissance Mission and Distant Melody can help us draw tons of cards, but now we have some better suited sorcery speed spells that do it in a way that works with our theme. Spell Scorn Coven is an adventure fairy, but neither side pack much of a punch at their cost. And Theoretical Duplication, okay, honestly, I don't really know which group to put this one in. The effect has a low floor, but a very high ceiling, and it's right there with Nettling Nuisance as a card I might add back if I find something in the deck isn't working out how I planned. The next group is probably going to cause the most discussion because we are going to be moving on from some of the large effect fairy focused cards. Starting off with a bang, Una, Queen of the Fae, was seemingly designed for Commander years before even the first group of precons in 2011. She's big, splashy, can make tokens, and is also expensive, slow, and mana intensive. We have a need for speed, so the OG Queen will sit this one out. Puppeteer Click absolutely pains me to cut. I love this card dearly, and in some decks, this can easily let you win the game from your opponent's graveyard. I've done it a ton of times. But this isn't one of those decks with no sacrifice outlet, so this click will have to move on. Sower of Temptation is another big effect and is great with Hexproof or Shroud. Like the last two cards, Sower is slower than we want and doesn't work as well with the Flash Focus the deck sports now. Shadow Puppeteers is the definition of big and splashy, coming in at a whopping 7 mana. This card definitely packs a punch, turning your fey into dragons, but we don't want to tap out with 7 mana on our turn. And this is the part where I note that all four of those fairies are also wizards. So even if you want to be uh, more fairy beatdown focused, get yourself a copy of Riptide Lab no matter what. And the last two, Fairy Formation and Rankle, are just too expensive for the effect. And the final group of cuts is just the Unneeded Lands and Ramp. We have two Islands and one Swamp coming out, as well as Wayfarer's Bobble and Felwar Stone, which to, to me is really an odd included this deck in the first place. So overall, we changed 25 cards. We did take out 13 fairies and only added 8, but with our new commander making fairy tokens, we're actually going to end up with more in the average game than the previous deck allowed. Now, most of our work was supporting that primary flash theme with a full-on 21 of the 25 cards really buffing that area of the deck. And before we finish up, I want to talk about some of my favorite combos that we can do with this brand new deck. Putting Mistbind Click on a Fairy with an Enter the Battlefield ability like Halo Forager, Spellsetter Sprite, or Malleable Imposter. Then returning it to your hand with Quickling, Linalandra Pranksters, or Familiar's Ruse. You get the Champion Fairies Enter the Battlefield ability and get to ruin someone else's day with Mistbind Click later. Asinine Antics will make everyone else's creatures into 1-1s with the Cursed Roll tokens that will be put on them. Being a 1-1 is perfect for either the Dream Spoiler duo to take them out, spell by spell, on your opponent's turn. Sometimes, you just need more spells to cast on opposing turns. Fencer Shaper Savant can target himself with his own bounce ability to get cast and then return to your hand immediately to take advantage of our plethora of flash and opponent's turn triggers. If you want to get started with this deck, please be sure to check out the link in the description below or head to your friendly local game store. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I'm Justin Parnell. We'll see you next time.